everyone. Today I'm working on this nice uh, SD45. I spent a little more than I usually for this uh, because, uh, well, I wanted it. <laughs> so this is a good engine for me because I will run it um, as an Erie Lackawanna train, but I can also run it with my early uh, Conrail trains. So um, there's nothing much to do on it. Probably runs great or right out of the box. I'm gonna run this. I have another SD45, very similar. So I'm gonna run them together. Everything's there, the handrails, the horn. So I'm still gonna take it apart just to make sure uh, it's running the way I want it to. And I'll still clean everything up. This is the best technique I've found to remove the shell. Makes it very easy. Uh, this is the same drive, it's an SD45, it's the same drive as an SD40. Uh, as you can see, the only difference is the um, long hood goes a little bit longer and the short hood goes a little bit longer. But the drive itself is very similar. So the shell, I'm going to run it through some uh, soap and water. That should only take a minute. And then we'll take a look at what's inside the drive system. This is likely going to be a short video because there's nothing to fix on it. The shell, actually, I took a good look while I was washing it. Looks like a million bucks, so that was quick. First, you remove the gas tank and keep all your stuff organized very important the light shield two little circuit boards and these are contact strips if they fall that's okay as well take the other one out I have the first one in my hands. Then we'll just remove the two screws. Keep track of these little guys. You can already tell it's got a lot of lube uh, in it already. So at this point, the only thing that's holding the engine together is those two little tabs here. Those four little tabs actually. And I'm gonna get rid of the screws. Keep track of them too. And then we'll open this up. The trucks will fall out, that's okay. They have an arrow pointing to which way uh, they should be going so that uh, you can't put them upside down. Well, I suppose you could, but it's easy to find which way they're supposed to go. There we go. And here we are. Thing of beauty. So I run it um, with my test leads. There's actually nothing to do on this, but while I have it in my hands, I'm just gonna add a drop uh, of oil. For the trucks, I don't put uh, any lubrication on this. It just come uh, from the side there, from the, under the side frames, and I lift it up very slowly. It's actually pretty clean. I'm still going to run, uh, run it under the tap with some soap and water with my toothbrush to remove uh, some of the excess uh, dust. It's actually not that dusty, but this is, this is the only reason why you would get any problems with any locomotive is they get dirty. This one is not all that dirty, so it's going to be quick. 
but I'm still gonna run the wheels uh, with my rag just to make them extra clean. And that will give you optimal performance. That's all you need to do. I run it between my nails and my rag and uh, that cleans my wheels very well. So I'm gonna be doing that 12 times. As you put it back together, make sure that you're lining up uh, these little cones with the bearing caps at the end. It also has two little pins here to hold it properly. That's all you got to do. I put no oil in these. I don't think they need it. The oil also will um, help you pick up hair or you know scenery foam and these only go one way you can't put them up that way you need the holes in the bottom to, for the gears and as I put it together this is not a race so you take your time Just snap right in there and you can test it with your finger you should be feeling no resistance this is when you know you got everything lined up properly so I'll do the other one off camera now I'm gonna put everything back together so I start with the two frames So make sure I line up these pins properly. I have my two insulators. And then I'm just gonna squeeze um, my two contact strips in there. I put the contact strips before I put the trucks on. So they go over and under this so under uh, this pin here and then I'm going to put the other side this engine certainly has been taken care of it looks to me like it hasn't even been run and the gas tank will hold these together Well, you have it apart like that you might be tempted to put um, you know put a red little bit of paint on your fuel filler or your fuel level gauge it's up to you me I don't do it because I want it to match exactly the other engine which is a factory unit so uh, I'll resist the uh, the temptation see if you want to do it you have to make sure you do it on both or all your units but me I'm actually quite happy with the factory paint job and the level of detail from the factory very happy with that you can go nuts and uh, drill holes for all your uh, grab irons and all the handrails you know you can add uh, MU cables so you can actually uh, add a lot of stuff if you want but end scale it's very small so I'm actually very happy just uh, running it the way they came from the factory at this point uh, it looks good but I'm, I'm feeling like I forgot something oh yes I put those two screws back in even comes with the instructions um, which obviously I don't need it might be useful to have them if you need to order a replacement part Kato's got quite a few uh, replacement parts available and uh, it's comforting to know you know if you lose the horn 
if you use a coupler you can always get more Jacado couplers uh, not everyone's uh, a fan of them these are if you notice know I'm, I'm using repeaters which I'm actually uh, that too I'm okay with the repeaters so we're all a little bit different A lot of my, I, I use old freight cars, so there are, most of them have repeaters. Every once in a while I'll get a freight car with micro trains. So I have a freight car with micro trains on one end and repeaters on the other end. Some days I can run a train with all, uh, all micro train scufflers too. Some people like the micro train scufflers. So you have to swap them out for uh, from cados. So I'm gonna actually um, test this on my track before I put the shell back on. So I'm expecting that it'll run great. Even sounds to me like it needs to be broken in a little bit. So that runs great. So I'll put my shell back on, it's the only thing left to do. And same way it uh, came out. It was very easy to, to take out. And that's it. Now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon.